Blake has 3rd stage news. Welcome back, everybody, from around the world. We are live to take your calls. In regards to the UFO phenomenon happening right now, and if you've captured anything amazing, just send it to us right here at 3rd Phase Moon. And if you've got something you want to share tonight, call in at 347-934-0378. We want to hear your incredible UFO stories. Have you been abducted by aliens? We also want to hear that as well. It's going to be an exciting ride, I got a feeling, because... Uh, I was contacted earlier by a person that calls himself Benny. He says he has the insight behind the curtain. The veil of secrecy is about to be uh, lifted. According to him, Benny uh, has seen behind this veil, the curtain, and he's going to be explaining that to us tonight. He's going to give us a lowdown on what really is going on, apparently. And uh, we're going to be getting to call her. So let's see. Let's see if we... uh, to get Vinny on the line and uh, see if he's live with us right here at Third Phase Moon. Vinny, you with us? Yes, I am, Blake. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for having me on your show, Blake. Um, I am a fan of yours and uh, do a lot of research all the time, and uh, you've got a great show. Thank you for allowing thank me to come here tonight. No problem, no problem. Hey, thank you. Well, you were explaining to me, you said there was a lot of stuff you wanted to talk about tonight, but I was thinking, well, there's there's so much in regards to this phenomenon that I don't want to get into it all tonight, but I want to specifically get into a few subject matters. And you are explaining to me earlier that you're a witness to a massive abduction of some sort, possibly over a thousand people being abducted in front of your eyes. What's the history behind this? Well, my history... Is, is a long time in uh, military, born and raised. Um, I was on a base, uh, Fort, Fort Benning, Georgia, in 1974 through 1977. And um, you, there, there's a lot of uh, YouTube information on this by a few people, and those people that come forward uh, end up dead, and uh, the families, and um, I'm not afraid of this by any means. I'm not afraid to die. Um, I know how they do this. Uh, like I said, I know I've seen behind the curtain, and I know how this works. Um, to, I, I have to give praise to my father uh, himself. Uh, he just recently uh, was taken out. Uh, because of this, and I actually sent in uh, some videos and pictures to your website, and I believe I was the cause of your major meltdown. Um, and the reason why I say that is is because I was hit, and I, as a backup, I sent this to other people, um, and I also sent it to another channel, uh, his name, uh, is James Lafar, and he is a Sicilian. I'm from Sicily. My family's from Sicily, and he has the Impossible Channel. His channel was hit, and uh, I'm a nerd. Basically, uh, I play with computers. I haven't watched TV for over 15 years. All I do is study. And when I mean study, I mean uh, I study uh, hieroglyphs. Uh, Sanskrit. Um, I study people that have spent their entire life studying things like uh, Jordan Maxwell, uh, Dave Ike, uh, Zechariah Sitchin, you know, just a few of those guys. And uh, something sure, that. Sure. Uh, what about. Go ahead. What did you see behind the bell? What. I, I understand doing a lot of research and stuff, but it sounds like you've seen things for yourself with your own eyes. What are some of these things? Let's start with an example. Well, actually, Blake, I, I still to this day, uh, I can go outside right now, and uh, they're they're out there all the time. They watch me all the time. Um, it, it's, it sounds funny to a lot of people, I know, but... Uh, I'm getting ready to explain to you that uh, we're not alone. 
They've always been here. We're basically a fishbowl, uh, an experiment, if you want to, if you want to say this. But it's a spiritual war. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, some of the work that uh, Ron Wyatt has done. You know, he shows that the biblical things that have taken place. Rob Sitka, he was uh, in special ops that went after another uh, group that went out to the desert, was doing a recon, and they were killed, and he fought uh, a giant, a red-haired giant. And part of this, uh, Blake, is they found a lot of these giants with copper armor. And that's the big thing about protecting yourself is is not only the, the, the copper, like a Faraday cage, because we're electromagnetic. And these weapons that the UFOs have, whether they're our technology, back-engineered technology, but these aliens' uh, basic technology is based off magnetics. And they don't call it that. There's a, they call magnets a totally different name. And... Uh, their technology is based on that. So if they want to put us in a trance and take us over, it's a frequency that they hit us with, and we're in a trance. That's why most of your people that are abducted don't have memory of this and lost time. And they don't remember. They say, oh, well, I'm outside and I'm looking up at the sky. I noticed the UFO over me, and next thing I know, Three or four hours have gone by. People were looking for me. Well, the uh, missing 411, uh, June 7th and June 9th interview with David uh, Pilatus, if I'm saying that right, uh, has been doing a lot of research, four different books that I know of, on missing 411 people uh, that are abducted from these uh, forestry reserves that are owned by the UN. And where's the UN? And what do they control? Well, one of their, their main headquarters is in Jerusalem on a mountain that uh, Jesus said in the Bible that he took his disciples to and said that was the gates of hell and asked his disciples, who am I? And why I say that, Blake, is because these people are not what they think they are. Our leaders are not what we think they are. And when I say I look behind the veil and I see what's going on, I'm telling you right now that they have technology that we could only dream about. And you know, you go back in time and show somebody a cell phone that we have today, and you know they you, you just they couldn't explain it. Yeah, yeah, of course they'd be amazed. But obviously, technology has come a long way, and uh, yeah, when it comes to technology, yeah, people from Mongo would be amazed. But what about this? Uh, I'm trying to get you down on some details here. I'm having a hard no time seeming to get that that answer here. But go ahead. I go ahead. really. Okay, let's start off from from the beginning. I, you said okay. that you were, you were witness to a massive alien abduction over maybe a thousand people abducted 13, in front of your eyes. Thirteen hundred. Yeah, thirteen hundred. From what people. I what I understand, all ranks, even civilians. Um, and did you when see I this with I'm your eyes, or is this a, is this another? No. Yes, I did. I was on the base. <laughs> yes. You were. Uh, on base. I was actually. Okay, so. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you. Well, this to me, after all these years, was basically a beta test, a PSYOP, uh, that uh, our own government was involved in. And the reason why I say that is, is because why would you hush people up and kill them for it? Because you're hiding something. That's why. You don't go kill people for nothing. And uh, people that come out and try to warn people uh, about what's going on, 
is a serious matter in my in, in my eyes. You know, uh, we try to warn people about what we're in, what's going on, and if you're taken out for a reason, it's because you're hiding something. Now, our government hasn't come clean on the UFOs, yeah, the UFO abduction. Secrets. Of course, yeah, of course, they're they're not telling us the truth. But what about not at all. What, what base was this? Where were you when this happened? What was the re- response? Did I, I want to get down to these people being abducted? Was there a big ship that came over the military base? What base was this? There was, yeah, there were there were there were several. Detail. There were several. Um, you know, some were taken up in groups. Um, others were taken up individual. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, uh, you play that game. <laughs> Uh, where you have the big crane come over and scoop people up or, or scoop your stuffed animals up uh, and show this pizza. I mean, it was basically the same way. Uh, and I was uh, seven years old at the time. And uh, it was it was not fun for me as a kid to witness. Uh, I was actually kidnapped off the base by my own mother afterwards and the federals uh and the EMPs uh came after me and uh weren't very happy of course but uh my mom knew what was going on and uh was very uh scared for my safety and kidnapped me off off the base. So that shows you the guts of my mother and my dad was nobody to mess with either. He's a what you call Section Eight head hunter, uh, which was an elite squad that uh, in Vietnam that would go in villages and uh, you know kill a whole village. I mean, he was not a person to mess with. Um, he was a guard for a two-star general, Shirky, and he's my godfather. I was around him from birth. They raised me, and I was shown stuff that, uh, and involved in stuff, Uh, and what I mean by that is, is I'm O negative. I have more vertebras than your normal person. If you know anything about the O negative blood, um, we have certain abilities like uh, better sight, better hearing, uh, immune to a lot of uh, uh, viruses and stuff like that. I was involved in basic basic programs uh, for telepathy, uh, just like uh, uh, what's his name. Uh, Lisa yeah, what kind of program? And Ron, or, uh, Romanac, very nice people. I actually went out to Colorado and spent the week at their house just so I could get to know him because uh, he was involved in a lot of the programs that I was involved in, but I was taken out of these programs because my abilities were a lot better than a lot of the other people. And... Um, I basically So you're saying because of the special blood type that you have, you have extra sensory powers and most normal people without this blood type don't have this. So yes, from what I understand people how many people on this planet in a percentage case would have this certain blood type? Are you aware of a percentage? What's the average between uh, one and a hundred? One in a hundred, it's very it's very rare, maybe two or three people. Um, and you there said were people, oh, so your medical records could be researched on what blood type you are and then therefore being recruited into these secret programs because of actually, your medical I background? Think, yes, and I have this to uh, correspond with what I'm saying. I carry my medical files everywhere. Uh, basically, from what my dad said, I was involved in, in a program, and uh, that was part of it for, I don't know if it was a hybridization program. 
all I know is that O negative blood is is a very rare uh, blood type, and most of the people have it have got uh, extrasensory abilities. Um, I have the abilities to sort out electronics. I interfere with uh, cell phone, and uh, I can go into a Walmart and uh, I don't know other places that have computers uh, and interfere with them where I actually have to step back away uh, from the computers for interfering with them. Have you ever have you ever gone to Vegas, may I ask? Have I been where? Uh, you know, maybe a Vegas casino. Uh, switch off some of those things. It's interesting. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, yeah I've, I actually have been to Vegas. Uh, <laughs> it was quite fun, too. Uh, uh, I actually uh, uh, won enough money that uh, I paid for a set of snakeskin boots. <laughs> So uh, my wife was pretty happy about that. So, yeah, yeah. No, so you bought your wife snakeskin boots? <laughs> well, no. You must she, she, she she's happy she that you bought the, yourself a gift. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we had a great time out there. Uh, oh, Vegas okay. is... Uh, okay, to stop, kidding aside. So do you still have this effect on uh, electric uh, devices oh, yeah. such as or is it, can, we, is there any way can, can we document yeah. this? Or can you film oh, it on yeah. video? I'd, no problem at all. Uh, I've got quite a collection of cell phones and pads and stuff like that that just short out. Uh, I, in the last four years, I probably have had, uh, how many, honey, 15, 20 cell phones? And, I, and I've got pictures of all this. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I, I am not light on electronics at all. Yeah, yeah. Don't come around my computer systems. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think I already bad. helped you out on that, Blake. <laughs> uh, sorry yeah, about know. that, but you know I did. I, I yeah. sent you Blake what I said. These pictures and videos of the flying saucers over me all the time. I call them anti gravity craft because I know what they are, and they're several Where do you different think types. Where do you think these flying saucers are coming from? Are they interdimensional? Or are they uh, intergalactic or intergalactic for all that? Where, where, are they military? My backyard, basically. Uh, there's three underground military bases out here, and they were pissed when I flew my drone over them. Uh, so pissed that they got their helicopter out with no tail numbers on it. And uh, we're swirling around yeah. the neighborhood. We live in a mountain range out here. And uh, to verify that as Big well. Big advisory. Big advisory. Don't fly drones over military bases. It's pretty much a, a bad idea. You'll probably get some, yeah, I mean, you're going to get some slack for that. But did you uh, discover anything? What do you, underground, underground sure. bases? What? Yeah. Are you uh, hearing, you know, they didn't there? advertise that they're military uh, bases. Really? But, uh, they have uh, uh, two hangars a mile apart from each other on uh, the side of one of these mountains out here off the parkway. And my house just happened to face it. And, uh, you know, I'm a night person. Uh, of course, I'm up right now with you. I've got a telescope. I've got night vision. Uh, all the toys to play with, lasers. And, uh, I, you know, I monitor airwaves. That's part of the what I like to do. I like to monitor uh, satellite communications, and I've built three or four different antennas. Like I said, I'm a nerd, and I listen to different frequencies. And these craft, obviously, you know, they don't operate on our same frequency, so uh, I search above and below uh, our bands and, uh, you know, I'll just give you a clue right there. That's where to start. And they, you know, even though stuff is encrypted, what about you these? still get, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I want to get into the cryptids. But, again, do these devices that you affect, do they have any effect on you? Do you have, like, headaches or anything like that from uh, 
electronic devices, any impact? Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, the experience I have, yes. And the things that I have done, um, Amazon sells uh, copperware, and it's spandex, and it's got copper weaving in uh, in the fibers. And I found that the best for me uh, to not interfere with electromagnetic waves, but yet they don't interfere with me as well. That's something that I found out that has protected myself Anytime, I call these the geek squad. Anytime they want to come after me, I'm already prepared to defend myself against their technology. And their technology, like I said, is based on electromagnetics. So they can knock us out with their frequency because they know our brain waves. I know it sounds like a tinfoil type thing, but uh, hey, you know it works. Yeah, some people really do believe in the tinfoil hat. You know, I like, some people you gotta have some think kind of protection. A weird I mean, thing uh, they've ever heard. Yeah, and that's that's what their technology is based on: frequency and electromagnetics and microwaves. I mean, don't think they can't vaporize <laughs> something quickly because they can't. Uh, you know, laser microwave technology. I mean, that for you instance, you hung out with twin, the, you said you hung out with Stan Romanek for a little bit. Did any strange experiences happen while you were hanging out with the Romanek family? Stan and Lisa, they're great people. I love them to death. Um, to me, you know, we we were like brothers. Uh, we have some pictures of us. We, you know, we we just clicked. You know, we understood each other. Um, he showed me. Uh, some things, and I showed him, uh, you know, we shared, you know, basically it was like a, a, a twin brother type thing that we'd been away from each other, and then, you know, I was so welcome. I, I just can't, it was just, they invited me in their house. I was only planning on staying a couple of days. They made me stay for a week. I mean, that that's how... That's how. Uh, that's how much we got along with each other. I mean, um, you know, people think that if they don't understand, they haven't done any background. If they hear, if they were to hear this uh, radio show, talk show tonight, they would think I'm nuts. But it, it's all about the knowledge that you acquire along the way of what's really going on. Um, far as the UFO thing, um, the abductions and stuff like that, um, people with the abilities that I have, O negative blood, you know, when you study these things and you, and you realize that these people, myself included, are different, you know, I, I always want to know why, and uh, I always want to meet other people like me, and when I ran into Stan and Lisa, uh you know, it, like, like I said, it was like twin brothers. We just, uh, you know, just couldn't get enough of talking to each other and telling our experiences and sharing our photos, sharing our videos. Um, my wife, you know, she thought, I drove uh, well, probably you know 22 what? Finny, Let me, uh, 20... let me, so I want to ask you, have you been in close proximity to an alien and been abducted aboard a, a, an extraterrestrial craft? Well, I can't really say that, Blake. But what I can say is is that I have recently protected myself so I don't get knocked out and lose the time. That That's, okay, that's just, I know something. Hold it right there. That is a, hold it right huh? there. We'll get back to you. We'll get back okay. to you. There's... Um, we want to take a quick break there's a lot of people that may have some questions for Vinny or maybe they got something they want to sure. share but I'm sure we have a, some a, another experience that we want to share of yours and maybe a last uh, message to our listeners stand by everybody we'll be right back okay
All right, we're back. Third phase moon broadcasting live uh, from the big island of Hawaii. And we have Vinny on the line. If anybody has any questions for Vinny, we'd like to hear them. And there are a few questions coming in for him. And first of all, people want to see evidence. They want to see photographic video evidence. Vinny, how do people get to see any of your uh, evidence that you've accumulated over these years? I'm certainly going to send it to you, uh, either right as we get off the phone. Um, I've got several different types of uh, craft and pictures and videos. I see, that you, I see you do have a YouTube channel. There's not much. There's no post on there. Can you post it up on your post, YouTube channel? Yeah, I can. Uh, I haven't. Um, and the reason why is because I know some of these craft that I have photographed uh, and where they're at and where they come from. And um, I don't have a problem where sharing do they with come you. From, Benny? A couple of these craft come, like I said, from my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, they That's they cool. are our military, basically. So you think the military is working with this technology that they, sure they are taking it out for a test run in your backyard, and apparently, where, what state is this in? What uh, town is this military uh, base in? North Carolina, and you can uh, Google sky ships over cashers. This will verify this as well. Sky ships over cashers. C h a s h e r s cashers. I E R S, sorry. Got it, got it. We'll look that up. We'll look that up, and I urge everybody else to. Some people are asking, do you know what an alien looks like? Well, there are various uh, types, you know, the typical grays, of course, but the one that run this country are reptilian. Do you have any proof of that? Well, I, I tell you. Uh, the, from what I, what I, the information that I've gathered, uh, gathered personally, uh, Freemasons are behind it, and Jordan Maxwell and David Icke will also, uh, and they have been telling people for a long time. They're ahead of our governments. And I mean, local, city, and federal courthouses. Uh, these people. Uh, you don't want to think that the technology they have that they walk among us. And I tell you, if you cut yourself and they see blood, uh, they can't hold their uh, their shape too long. You'll find that out just in your own experience. Don't take my word for it. Think somebody is uh, that's uh, a government official, police officer, uh, because that's where they're all at. And uh, if you have any question about that, uh, when they see blood, they cannot keep their shape. So you're saying if you suspect of suspect somebody of being a reptilian, we've heard of uh, people that have claimed that maybe some of their uh, relationships that they've had, their girlfriends, their boyfriends are possible reptilians. So you're saying if you well, uh, bleed Katie a little... Perry. Yeah, Katy Perry just came out because she shapeshifted in front of her uh, fan and, uh, you know, gave an apology and said that she's a good reptilian. She admitted it to the world. Oh, I'm a good reptilian. Yeah. I don't follow yeah. Katy Perry too much, but now that's getting well, probably a pretty big buzz on Blake the internet. And, yeah, and Blake, and ladies and gentlemen, if you don't believe what I'm saying, look up your uh, your stars, your actors and actresses. Uh, that say they have sold their soul to the devil, made a deal with the devil. I know there's a lot of people that don't even know the Bible exists. I know there's a lot of atheists. Um, But when you do the research on these people and and what they've done to gain their fortune and fame, uh, then I think you'll start taking this a little bit more serious because this is not a game. It's your soul they want. 
Well, uh, we asked recently of Dr. Stephen Greer in regards to him being a possible disinformation agent. He said he admitted it that, uh, and that was a big question. I thought that I asked him. I, I don't think many yeah, people asked Dr. That. Greer that question, and he uh, he admittedly said that he was approached by pretty much somebody in the government for two million dollars to join, you know, the disinformation side and who knows do you think that could have been a reptilian uh, of, of course person that I, I have no doubt in my mind they're very vindictive uh, they have unlimited resources um, they could be flying over the house right now they make fun of us they laugh at it every day to see different races fight against each other because they control this world Just makes me all right. Very, sure, very no, well, sad. Maybe, to, to maybe. What can we do about it? I, are you going to? Well, this like is a, where you come in? Man. This is where you come in. You got one last statement. I'm going to have to get two other callers, and you're invited back anytime to call back. But yeah, this is your the, your stage at this moment. What can we do? If do you think it's a threat to us? It seems like they've been in control so long. You know, people are pretty happy well, the with their lives. I, I'm not complaining. The thing I, I, I can say is is the Bible's real, and uh, the only way to protect yourself is to get baptized and not by sprinkle. Uh, you have to do it by submersion. And uh, that's the only way to protect yourself that way. The rest is, uh, you know, the copper wear anything to shield you from electromagnetic uh, frequencies that would, uh, you know, interfere with your thoughts um, and put you in a trance. Uh, These frequencies exist. We just don't know about them because they're not telling you. That's their advantage over us. That's how they take advantage over us. As far as uh, uh, the the, uh, proof, I'm going to send you some proof like you've never seen before. Um, I hope uh, you share it with everybody. Um, I have several different types of uh, uh, craft that are in focus, not blurry. I have several different crafts that I videotape that are in focus. I took still shots of the videos. Uh, I urge anyone to come forward to see if I've altered these in any way. Uh, it's taken from my uh, cameras and video equipment, and um, I have backed these up, and various friends of mine have them, uh, just to, just in case somebody feels froggy and wants to step up and try to take me out. And uh, I fear you not. Uh, the Lord's with me, and I'm telling the truth, and that's why I'm here tonight, Blake. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity come forth and, you know, basically uh, give the information that I have and uh, the people that have fallen before me trying to get the information out to the people. Well, there's um, there's different ways of communicating, but I do like the way we had our conversation tonight. We were able to ask questions. You're giving me answers and, you, and uh, answers to my questions. So, hey, it's interesting to hear people I have nothing talk. to hide. Everything, everything yeah, and to I want to look at your, I want to look at your evidence. I urge you, I urge you, Vinny, to definitely upload that stuff to YouTube or create a Facebook account, something, so we could always like, oh, hey, well, take a look at that because it's important that people share their information on their own channels and, you know, make make a place so people could contact you if they live close by, if they're experiencing the same thing. And then we could share that to third phase moon. And then everybody gets the credit they deserve as well with their own individual channel, because we love giving credit where credit's due. Vinny, uh, you keep in touch. I, I got a feeling your legacy is not done. And uh, we want to hear things in the future. If anything else goes down, I appreciate the insight. That was quite interesting. Now we've got time. Probably for one more caller this Monday night. We're going to be broadcasting again Friday night, taking calls from around the world. So if you've got something you want to share, by all means, call in Friday night. But 
I think we got time maybe for a couple calls. We'll see how it goes. Eric Code uh, 706, uh, thanks for waiting. Welcome to the show. Um, hi, Blake. It's me, Sophia. How are you? Hey, Sophia. I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, what's on your mind tonight? You got a question for uh, somebody? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I want to oh, know okay. a couple things. Um, he mentioned Fort sure. Benning, and um, I wanted to know if that's the base that his mother um, took him from. And what years was he there specifically? And um, what was it that he was talking about on the base specifically? Well, yes. Question. Uh, great. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, I was uh, yes, I was kidnapped off of that base because my mother knew about uh, the abductions. Um, I was on that base uh, 1974 through 1977. My dad was an instructor. Uh, he retired major. Uh, my godfather's a two-star general, Shirky. Was and, he an airborne uh, instructor or was he on Sand Hill? Uh, he was airborne. He flew Huey. He was shot down three times. And he also uh, was an M1 tank instructor in Kentucky. Okay. Um what was it that happened on Benning specifically that you were talking about an abduction, a mass abduction? Very massive, yeah. Um, you know, Do you know what part was, of the uh, base that occurred on? It was outside the barracks, and it was in the middle of the uh, uh, the firing range um, during live exercise. Okay. And, uh, um. Do you, uh, do you remember what year that was? It, I believe it was the latter part of 1974. Okay. There was another um, guy. Go ahead. Um, uh, when your mother took you off the base, was your dad still there? Oh yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was not very happy. The MPs come after me. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I uh, just so you know, um, I was born on Fort Benning, and uh, my family is all military. I'm also Army DOD, and I served. Um, I know the base DOD. really, really, really well. Um, yeah. I've never heard of this incident. I know a lot that goes on out there. That's why I'm curious. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, they have it, gone through it, major efforts to keep this quiet. And I can't imagine with that many people um, that it has been quiet for this long. But you will find um, a YouTube videos on this. And um, they have, there was a colonel. Uh, that also stepped up and uh, he verified this as well. I was born okay. on Fort Rucker. Okay. Yeah, most of us, if we're all military kids, we were born somewhere. It had to be a base, usually. Um, let me ask you another question. Um, sure. When uh, this all occurred and your mom took you off the base and everything, um, you know, um, you know the city that's just outside the base on the on the Georgia side is uh, Columbus, Georgia, and um, they have um, a lot of civilians that work on the base uh, as well as uh, army people. And I heard you say that civilians were part of this. Were were there some of the people from Columbus also? I don't know. I just know they weren't in uniform. Um, they could have been. Uh, military personnel that uh, that were just not happened to be in uniform. I just know there was people taken that were just in regular clothes. But the thing that I did notice is I noticed in Desert Storm and various other things that military personnel with their night vision have found that these UFO crafts are basically in the background observing everything. Now, from what I understand and the things I know is it's our own personnel 
with the ETs. And in other cases, the ETs are off by themselves, and our personnel is in these crafts. And I mean anti-gravity crafts, observing everything. Basically, what I'm telling you is, from what I understand and what I saw, it was a beta test. I see. Um, also, one, one more question. Uh-huh. Who, what uh, company was your father detached to? Uh, you know, on the Benning. Only thing I, on Benning, the only thing I know is he was airborne and he was a headhunter, special ops, basically. Um, was he a ranger? Yes, he was. I've got all of his, uh, his medals and I've got all of his decorations. Uh, he was a highly decorated officer in honor. So, was he detached to the 75th Regi- Re- Ranger Regiment? No, I can't really say. It, it, it sounds familiar, uh, but I can't give a definite answer to you right now. Okay. He's going to be buried in Um uh, When did he? Is he still alive now, or did he pass? Well, he was he just hit by one of the electromagnetic weapons. That I was talking about. This is this is all real. This is not a game. Did oh my goodness! Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, yeah. my condolences to tonight. you. Thank you so much. But that's why I'm here tonight with Blake. Um, I'm here to tell all this to the public. Tell this to the world. You know, this is this is yeah, not a game. Yeah, you said your father. You said your father had a YouTube channel that he was uh, running out, no. putting out information. Well, is no, that correct? No, What's the name of that YouTube channel? No, he doesn't have a YouTube channel. I was the one that actually um, came forth um, and showed him that you know the truth has finally come out. And uh, you know he was talking amongst his his guys, and uh, when all this went down, you know they monitored yeah, everything. Yeah. Uh, so what, what did I mean, go down? When did this go down? How did you? When did your father get hit by this? When did you realize that this uh, it was two and a half something months ago. Okay, in your opinion? Two and a half months ago. Mhm. Yeah, you know, he told me a lot of things about Vietnam, and and it wasn't just a war. Uh, you know, there was other things going on, like uh, weather modifications, like they're doing with chemtrails right now. Uh, there was ETs there, from what I understand. They looked like giant spiders the size of the Volkswagen. And um, the, for, from what I know and understand, reptilians have created these other races. They all answer to one. And um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's getting ready to come to a head. That's, that's all I, I, I can really tell you at this point. It's all getting ready to come to a head. Was was your dad a member of RICA? Or uh, people call it RICA mostly. I call it RICA. It's just my weird. But was he a member of uh, RICA? It's a yellow. It's a yellow patch with a horse on it. I. I. I, That was recon. I think you're thinking of. uh, No, no. This is like an association for. these guys for after they come home, you know, and they're at, and they uh, retire from the service. They all know each other, and they all kind of it's like a brotherhood, and they all hang out together. And well, that was, uh, your dad was of, but he did he didn't retire. He went into uh, reserves, and he retired at Whiteman Air Force Base. And that's another story. They had UFOs all the time around there, and I witnessed this as well. Um, that's where the stealth bombers and the fighters are at. They have all kinds of uh, uh, various nuclear bombs and stuff like that. Um, these UFOs would fly over uh, the compound and uh, shoot beams down into uh, where they had these weapons. Um, you know, I was there on base, and they said, don't fire. And my dad was really upset because, you know, uh, you're supposed to protect uh, your base, and uh, you know you're not supposed to stand down. But you know these guys—they have weapons that can just vaporize, just like they did with the twin towers, where you see 
steel beam falling over and it just vaporized. A steel I beam vaporized. That was their part of their technology. That's why I'm saying, you know, the people that have been in charge, the Bushes, you know, they're all in on it. I mean, it's not hard to figure out. It was a psyop. Buildings just fall. Uh, what do you think, Sophia? Get... What do you think, Sophia? Does, uh, is, is Vinny on to something here? Is he, in your opinion, you know, from a someone from the public, I know you have a military background. What's your gut feeling with Vinny here? My gut feeling, well, it's not my gut. It's it's what I've lived and what I know is to be the truth. Um, you. You know, my father was an Airborne Ranger. Um, uh, I will tell you that in the military, you don't mix. Uh, most men who join don't fly um, Hueys or any helicopter and or rangers. Rangers don't do that. There's a whole battalion of them up in Anniston, Alabama, and um, it's a whole separate thing. Cavalry doesn't mix with infantry. Rangers are infantry, and uh, tanks are cavalry. And, yeah, they are up in Kentucky. Um, they didn't come to Fort Benning until, um, I want to say, it was probably around 2007, uh, Literally, I was there actually when it occurred, and that's when they shut down Fort Knox, and they sent half of the cavalry to Texas, to Fort Hood, and the other half of them came to Fort Benning. Um, they now share the base. It's a very interesting situation. Um, think, so I'm 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 dubious. Was, I think my dad in 1982, three, four, was in Fort uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky with the M1 tanks. And as far as uh, the Hueys, uh, I have his uh, gyroscoper or whatever you want to call it and a few other instruments that he was shot down. My dad was uh, the general's aide. He flew him around. Um, that's, that's why I was saying the Hueys, bringing in the Huey type thing. Um, in Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, he was doing some kind of training um, that uh, even I was involved in, and it was uh, the, the mind telepathy thing and uh, all the different things that they had me doing, uh, reading cards, uh, and then I was taken out of that group but uh, I'm only telling you and everybody that's listening uh, what I experienced and my dad's background, which uh, yeah. I have all of his medals, and I've got banana boxes full of his awards. Uh, my dad was and very... What was your daddy's name? Principe is my last name. Traced my family all the way back to the Vatican. I have the ability to look that up, actually. Um, yeah. You'll find my family goes all the way back to the Vatican. Okay, well, I'm, I'll, I'll check it out and, um, you know, let you know what I find out. Um, I'm, I'm interested in your story. Um, great, very interested. Great, um, I've had an interesting life myself. Um, I'm just very careful, you know, about things. You know, I like to yeah, make sure the facts are correct. I just, you know, That's I don't have any... any any strings on me. Um, that's why I tell it just like it is. Um, I don't have anything to hide, and I don't have anything to uh, uh, to not say. So my my limitations are are, are none to me, um, as far as I'm concerned. I just tell it the way it is. Well, absolutely, Benny, and I do appreciate your candidness and you reaching out to me today. So we could get you on the show and uh, it's been my pleasure getting you on sharing your information and, uh, and getting... I want everybody to know ladies and gentlemen I'm, I'm going to give Blake uh, more information on my father's background uh, so nobody has any doubt about what I'm saying and I'm also going to give Blake the pictures and the videos to uh, follow up with everything that I just said tonight I don't want to want anybody to think that I would mislead them because that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to tell the truth. 
appreciate it, Vinny, and I look forward to your evidence, and I appreciate everybody for listening in tonight. It's, uh, you know, it's one thing to have a story, but to have information in regards to the history and the background, and that's why I invited Vinny on. I want to see his evidence, and we're going to keep you updated to see how that is. I urge everybody out there, if you've got evidence, just go ahead, upload it to YouTube, and if you want to share it to Third Phase Moon, copy-paste that link and send it to our email. Again, it was, uh, it was my pleasure broadcasting tonight and sharing Vinny's story, and the people's opinions is very important. I want to get your opinions of what you think uh, Vinny's story was all about tonight. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies, be safe, and we'll see you. Friday night, broadcasting live, Third Phase Moon Radio. We'll see you next time. Be safe, everybody. Third.